<clears throat> one man was born in a land where everyone was named Bill, were all six feet tall, 160 pounds, same color hair and eyes, and who in fact all looked exactly alike. Well, he grew tired of this pretty quick and began to pretend that everyone looked different. And it wasn't too long after that that God realized what he was doing and told him to get the hell out of his garden. <laughs> One man was half of Siamese twins who were separated at birth. But not separated enough, he now says, <laughs> there was once a magician who put wings on cows, gills on lions, and legs on clams. That is, he dreamed that he did. Such be the story of all magicians, all magicians who think and who have an audience of like inclination. One man became twice as smart as he once was, only to realize that twice, even 20 times twice, wouldn't begin to get the job done he had in mind. Smart is to know how smart you are. Dumb is to not. P.S. Dumb and smart are magical illusions to entertain undemanding audiences. One man would eat until he made himself sick. He would, in fact, only eat when he planned to make himself sick. <laughs> Do not ask me regarding any metaphorical possibilities to this. It's not polite to talk with your mouth full. One man had ghosts in his house, which were both visible and non-visible in a peculiar sort of way. When he'd look at them, they'd disappear. And when he wasn't looking, they'd be there, although he couldn't see them. <laughs> well, at least he wasn't aware of them. Funny ghost, funny house, huh? Not to mention the man's visual condition. One of one man's rules to go by was that you're only given a hard sell regarding things that aren't necessary. And every time he'd think of this, he'd take another glance in the direction of all institutions, good advice, common sense, and last but certainly not least, his own thinking. There is a certain thing known only to man that only has shape and substance when not looked at. One man said to another, can't you just imagine how hippos must envy us? <laughs> yeah, he replied, if they was intelligent enough to be able to. You mean if they could think? Yeah, I guess. But isn't that the whole point of why they don't? And why we like to imagine that they would if they could? Well, I guess you're right, but Damn, I wish you hadn't said that. So I played both parts again. Did you? <laughs> Above the door at one wake-up clinic was a sign that said, Welcome to the world of non-birth, the realm of no beginning and no end, which, truth be told, didn't do much for walk-in business. There was once two brothers who, in midlife, compared notes Turned out that one of them had been taking stupid pills for years, and the other one be natural capsules. Funny thing was, in spite of this, you couldn't tell them apart. <laughs> After this get-together, one of them, I won't say which, wanted his medication money back. The chronology of one man's efforts he began by wanting the inner liberation. After that, then he started reading about it. After that, he began thinking about it. Soon he began to write about it himself. 
Ultimately, he began to talk about what he had thought and wrote about it. <laughs> then finally, finally? No, not really. But finally, he began to want the liberation more than anything else he had ever done. And now, one man's response to this. I don't get it. <laughs> and even, and I'm just speaking theoretically now, and even if I do, I don't like it. It's disgusting, and I don't believe it for a moment. Say, by the way, precisely just how long is a moment? Ah, uh, and I'm not asking for any personal reasons. Uh, just curious, that's all. Now may I ask a question? What kind of creatures get disturbed over the mere progression of things? What? You say you want an answer to the question? Are you sure? Can you guarantee me that you won't take it personally? Hmm? Those who believe themselves in sight of Istanbul, who will declare that they did not come all this way, just end up back in Paris, have never left Paris. Travel, travel, tracks and gravel, don't look down, it just makes you dizzy. <clears throat> I take it not all of you have ridden on a train and stood on the vestibule. There are two approaches to getting rid of rats around your house. One is to chase them away, the other is to just ignore them. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are two approaches to getting rid of rats around your house. Mm -hmm. One seems to make sense, mm -hmm. the other, well, you decide for yourself. <laughs> here rats, good little rats, come to Papa. How the hell did that get in here? <laughs> what the hell does it mean? Without a mirror, no one knows how ugly they are. Without a mirror, without thought, no one's aware of how ignorant they are. And without the light, no one realizes they have lived in the dark. There are two advantages to not looking. And one is that as long as you don't look, you're not aware that you don't look. The reason for the popularity of the phrase, wake me when it's over, is that men are aware that, they, that that will be the only time that will be possible for them. <laughs> after, long after it's over. More comfort for the notion that it's a waste of time to even start. Honey, wake me when the lights go on. You know where. One man kept a creature in his house which, no matter how often he corrected and reprimanded it, he could never train. Choo-choo. <clears throat> One man's present view. The problem is not in stopping thought, but in stopping it from starting. A father told a son, don't waste your time trying to repair an action that you have mistaken for an object. The boy was 40 years old. <clears throat> While strolling through the woods with his dog one day, aware of the wildlife's activity all about him, a man thought, domesticated animals must be the dumbest of their kind. They're the only ones who enjoy hearing the sound of their own name. As he continued his saunter, he was later briefly struck by a glazing glimpse of how his notion was also pertinent to his own mind and its thinking. Here, rats, good little rats. <clears throat> Although at first hearing it may sound illogical, staring at the mind can make you stupid in other areas. Another short fact that can save you a lot of time otherwise wasted. Only those not speak of how interesting they are. And now a different sort of news. 
How in the land of elephants can fleas continue to carry on were it not for their ability to fill in the blank? An update from our space patrol. On a world just recently discovered that is ruled by balloons, a conflict has been observed wherein legitimacy of power is being claimed by both air and latex. The experts' benefits. Attempting a reflective look back over his life and what he had achieved, one man mused. When I was young and unlearned, I peed in my pants. But now I'm a trained professional and I pee in other people's. <laughs> Life asked one man, which would you rather be, minded or simple-minded? And the man asked life, is there a category beyond the last one? And life stopped to have a pimento loaf sandwich. I guess even life has to take a break. There are two types of men who will often show up at a party uninvited. Those who believe that the gods have spared their life for some great purpose they are later to accomplish, and those who believe they've only lived this long as some kind of punishment, <laughs> slam the door on them both. <coughs> One man is still convinced that if he can come up with the perfect description of his present condition and the ultimate name for his freedom therefrom, that his chances for success will be surely increased. May I note for you that this notion is both ridiculous and valid based on which direction your bathwater drains. One day a house parrot said to a photograph of a soldier, well, before words are totally dismissed as impotent and unpromising, answer me this, how are they able to fashion such negative possibilities about their own nature? Huh? Answer me that. And to the demand, the photo stood silent. A mother cautioned a daughter, don't squander your energy attempting to correct a verb that you have mistaken for a noun. The girl was 50 years old. <laughs> After he died, one guy thought, man, it's weird being dead. Then later thought, hmm, I wonder how weird it was being alive if I'd ever paid any attention. <laughs> The awakened have no philosophy of life, no religion, no beliefs. And yet it is they, and yet it is the awakened who have given man these things. And still another example of how things might actually be arranged in life right under man's nose and him never know it. Car wrecks are caused by people who are not wearing clean underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and some lab rats with cancer smirked and said, the more the merrier. <laughs> and if you really want to push it, one more. Young boys with only one eye are responsible for the appearance of BB guns, rocks, and sharp sticks. <laughs> A man pondered, if the enlightenment is not real, then why has the idea lasted for a thousand years? And then thought, just because a soup is phony doesn't mean a man is not hungry. After questioning his apparently limited progress toward the awakening over the last 30 years of his life, a man realized that religion, philosophy, science, and psychology in their efforts to understand man over the last 5,000 years have made none. One man lived half his life with a woman he despised. And the way this worked and was possible was that he only despised her when he was aware that he did. A certain man thought, if there is essentially no actual moving toward the liberation, and no going back to ordinary life, then what's the use? And replied to himself, what's the use of what? 
<clears throat> One man had a spotlessly clean suit that gave him magical powers, but it soon got soiled and he forgot about it. <clears throat> Can you help me, sir? I am searching for a tailor. It is not alterations that you need, but rather a good cleaning. No, I am sure that what I want is a tailor. Can you help me? I just tried to, but since you did not hear me, I will make one further suggestion. Find a memory expert. The boy asked his father, is it all in the searching or all in the finding? All in the knowing, he replied. A man said to a mirror, don't misdirect your efforts trying to change the appearance of reflections when everyone knows that reflections don't actually exist. They don't, replied the mirror, which was in fact the mind's own mind. One mother warned a son never to carry two particular items in his pockets, neither anything he liked nor anything he didn't like. And for many years, the lad couldn't walk straight. <laughs> well, that is walk straight by prosaic standards. One man began following this creature through the woods, but no sooner would he begin than it would disappear. And someone said, that's not much of a story, only to be countered by another voice that said, ah, oh, You've got no idea just what a story that really is. <clears throat> one day, one man caught his mind singing the song, Have You Ever Been Lonely? Have You Ever Been Blue? Which spurred him to respond, No, not till you got here. <laughs> if anybody from ASCAP for BMI shows up, tell them we paid the fee in advance. The salesman on the platform said, doesn't the fact that something cannot be described give you some hint? And sure enough, many hands shot up of people in the crowd immediately, ready to buy. The man, one man mused, the greatest thing about pseudo-sadness is that it doesn't make you feel bad. <laughs> the plausible pluses of minuses. There is no understanding to be had of what the mind is, only of what it is not. When one man heard people warning children not to look at the sun, he thought, how useful this could be if taken metaphorically. That which we stare at, we're stuck to, and that which we're stuck to, we take to be our mind. Oh, goody, look, the sky's coming out and wiping away everything to look at. To an awakened sailor, there is but one good sign, a barren horizon. In his desire to improve himself, one man became a doctor so that he would then have patience. But it didn't work. He disliked most of them. <laughs> Later on in life, he looked back and thought, what the hell was that all about anyway? <laughs> One man wanted to sail away to a magical land and believed that to do so required a ship of exotic wood. And all he had was plain local lumber which he didn't realize is all that is available to everyone and which will take a man anywhere he wants to go. Armchair travelers are thinkers, thinkers whose thoughts will not stay in the chair. And there are two ways you can take this statement. One of them completely waste your time and it will be the one most commonly taken. Any thought a man has can be seen as good and beneficial 
or just as easily seen as ill and destructive, any thought. Yet who picks up even a little hint from this obvious fact? I can go here, I can go there, while never leaving my heady chair. Or I cannot go, yet neither do I stay. The motionless liberation from where I am, from where I always think I am, when I think about it. When one man heard it said that we have two ears and one tongue, which proves we should listen twice as much as we speak, he thought, wait a second, we've got two minds, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> the world's divided into those who will never get the answer and the very few who even hear the question. To an enlightened explorer, there is but one good sign, a feature, featureless landscape. Regarding the male and matters mental, so mused one man, thinking's not really so bad, as long as you're not home to take delivery when it comes. <laughs> one man's motto pertinent the urgings of his mind is, I don't sign for nothing. In one place, there's a game show that works like this. The faster and more frequently and frantically you answer questions, before they're asked, the more prizes you win. <laughs> Just for fun, you want to guess where this place is. See, here's the thing. A lion, when he's hungry, will eat you whether he likes you or not. Okay, now here's the other thing. Your mind will think about and eat things only if it likes them or doesn't. Okay, you got it? <laughs> the matter of freedom simplified. If you're dependent on anything, you're not free. And may I draw your attention to the fact that this does not exclude thought. A man went to one commonly considered to be an awakened mystical master and asked, I have heard it said that some who are called mystics are frauds. Is there a way to tell? Easily, he replied, all mystics are fraud, and that took care of that. <laughs> no matter how often he would straighten them, one man would continually find the paintings on his walls to be hanging crooked, which he couldn't understand since he lived in the house alone. What he didn't understand was that the house lived there also. <laughs> On one world is a hospice in which the dying can spend their final days. Its benefits is as long as you are there, you forget that you're dying and thus no longer are for the moment, for as long as you forget it. Back on earth, rumors continue to circulate regarding the existence of an invisible race of men whose conception of what is healthy and life-giving and what is not is opposite from what is commonly accepted. The most popular wake-up clinics that ever appear on this planet are the ones which always advertise that they'll be open tomorrow and are never today. A statement, an actor is captive of his stage. Finding, don't be an actor. <laughs> statement, an actor is captive of his script. Finding, have no script. The mind is captive of its thoughts, and you know how it goes from there. One man had a game where he chased shadows. And it was, a, was really neat, you see, because he had a special definition for shadows. And later on, a certain man thought again, if there is an essence, no actual moving toward the awakening and no going back to ordinary life, then what's the use in what I'm doing? And replied to himself, just what it is, just what is it that you think you're doing?
One man said, every reply that you don't give is superior to every thousand that you do. And he was more specifically referring to your own responses to your own thoughts. A man went to a mystic with this inquiry. My brother says that man is divided into two groups, which I say is too simplistic and predictable. What can you tell me on this? And the wise one replied, how many people is your brother? <laughs> one man began to have this reoccurring nightmare, day and night, constantly, of being chased around by a gigantic ball of glue inside his own head and no way out, of course. Huh? Are you sure? Well, don't be silly. I said inside his own head. So, of course, I'm sure. Silly boy, what other possibility is there? Look out. Here it comes again. Glad I didn't... Invest a lot of dramatics in that. <laughs> there is one land where you can be blind and it makes no difference. As long as you're not aware that you're blind. When one guy in the midst of an exposition said, All proverbial wisdom, no matter how shaky it may sound to you personally, is based on something quite real and valid. Another guy thought, on what else can anything be based? An assumed mystical teacher who, in his speech regarding the subject, uses proper nouns, is either a master of the metaphor or doesn't know what he's talking about. Then there was this man who one day thought, if I could be of continual good cheer, the problem of being critical would solve itself. Then there was this school of intangible emancipation, which had this one rule regarding thought. Never think anything good, and never think anything bad. And that was it. Pow! Every day this one man ran after a bus, but sometimes would slip momentarily into an unusual state and see himself being pulled along by the bus. Mm -hmm. Every day this certain man would chase after a bus, but sometimes would slip momentarily into an unusual state and see the bus as chasing him. Then there was this other man who would every day run after a bus, but at times would slip momentarily into an unusual state wherein he could not be sure who was chasing who. If you don't run, you can't fall. If you don't run, you can't get confused. If you don't run, ignorance and uncertainty will never catch you. Note, all of the type running just mentioned is done in the home. Yeah. To a liberated mind, there is but one good sign. Nothing blank zippo. <laughs> Once in Istanbul, a man has nothing to say about it, and in fact has increasingly less the closer he gets. Instead of picturing himself as asleep, deluded, and in the dark, one man began to think of himself as a three-bean salad. <laughs> Another quiz to determine where you stand. In which area do you find the most humor? In words or in actions? There is a way that naivete is the same as enlightenment, but only if you know what it is. After extensive study of the matter, one man's come up with this rhyme. I'm home when I'm home and home when I'm gone. If you can eat but have your cake, then what difference does it make? 
He says he stands by this only for the moment and that it is subject to change. A man once wanted to capture a mysterious bird, which could only be done by using a special cage. But every time he'd catch the bird, all he'd find in the cage was the cage. One man lived many years in a hole, continually attempting to get out, but only succeeded when he realized he was in a hole. <laughs> If you move to a new place, you'll discover that the less planning you do, the better things go. Whenever this one man would get disheartened and down in the dumps, that is, he'd been spending too much time in thinking and not enough in trying to do the thing, he'd often look at, it, look at himself in the mirror and announce himself to be Cowboy dumbass and his one-eyed ramblers. <laughs> the most entertaining and deranged little band in the land. Usually, this would lighten his mood. <laughs> at least for the moment. Until he and the boys unconsciously lapsed into the next number. <laughs> An interesting thing. After this story was read on the air, a viewer wrote the following note. Dear sir, I was taken by that story you read, but as a professional musician, I wonder why you did not, at the end, say that this man's labeling of himself as a band usually lightened his mood, at least until he and the boys unconsciously kicked off their next number, rather than saying that they unconsciously lapsed into it. I find this curious. Why did you put it that way and not the other? Huh? 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 Yours, etc. An interesting question. Huh? One day, one man read a book. And when he got through, thought, well, I'll be damned. The world's divided up into those who've got it and those still trying to get it. It has come to the attention of our news department of a certain man who's running around who seems to be full of questions. This was such a late breaking story that no one had time to write down the actual information. I just had to pick it up out in the hall next to the gin, the water cooler, just before I came on. And uh, I must apologize to all of you serious news junkies because I am going to have to, just from that momentary mention I heard with no script, operating completely, extemper, whatever you call it, Lee, <laughs> I'm going to have to try and convey since it is of such importance to do my humble best. This man had several questions. One of them, he says that if you exclude possessions, if you exclude everything external to men and deal only with man himself, that there are only three aspects of man of which or that can be discussed, that you can discuss. How a man behaves, how he feels, or how he thinks. And this man's question is, I'm trying to paraphrase him from my dirt-handed memory, that his question is, how come the hell there's hardly any activity in the last category. And I forgot what the other question was. It was something to do with the mind.
Maybe I'll think of it next time.